Velkommen til Boy Larsens blog. In this video, I look at five important inventions and who made them. When I describe the five important inventions, you must forget what you know of the solutions we have today. One can talk about the curse of knowledge, which means that our knowledge today of these inventions prevents us from seeing how strange or even impossible it was for people living before the invention was made to believe that the invention could happen. The curse of knowledge is a term made in 1989 by economists Colin Kammerer, George Lowenstein, and Martin Weber. An illustration of the curse of knowledge, which I could have included in my sample as well as those I am including, is the invention of the Morse code and transmission, one could say, talking at long distances. It first stood its test in the catastrophe of the Titanic, which sank after colliding with an iceberg in 1912 on its way from the UK to the USA. Most passengers and crew drowned, but the Titanic's distress signal reached a freighter, which speeded to the place where the Titanic had gone down and saved a few more passengers. People before that invention did not think that one could talk to other people at long distances, for instance over many kilometers. People would believe that you could shout very loudly, but that would not be heard more than perhaps 100 meters. But we now know. This is our curse of knowledge. Now, to the five inventions I describe in this video. 1. Who invented the staircase? What is the problem? The problem is to get up high on a mountain. Or even how to get to the first floor of your house. You cannot jump up there. In Mesopotamia and Egypt, the earliest straight single flight of stairs appeared, built to provide access to upper floors. Later, during the period of classical antiquity, Greco-Roman complex staircases started being built, spiral, zigzag, and double-riser staircases came into being. 2. Who found out how to bring heavy loads high up? What is the problem? The problem is that a single grown-up person can only lift an object of around 70 kilos. A child can, depending on the child's age, not lift much more than its own weight. But an invention solved that. And both grown-ups and children can easily lift much more than their weight. The solution and invention were made by Archimedes around 250 before Christ. A block is a set of pulleys on an axle in a housing. When rope is run through a block or a series of blocks, the whole assembly is called a tackle. 3. Who invented capitalism? And if we are not asking about a person, then what caused capitalism? What is the problem? Some hate it, some love it. But who and what brought capitalism about? Again, before we had it, say from around the year 1500 after Christ or 1800 after Christ, depending on how you see it, nobody believed that the fantastic economic expansion would take place that capitalism has caused. We have the curse of knowledge, so for us, it seems natural. But before 1500 or 1800, nobody could imagine that. There are several answers possible on who or what caused capitalism. The clearest who answer is to say that the English philosopher Adam Smith invented capitalism. He lived from 1723 to 1790. Modern capitalist theory is traditionally traced to Smith's 18th century book, The Wealth of Nations. Smith explained why capitalism worked. He is famous for arguing that the baker is not working to serve you, but he tries to serve himself by selling as much and as good bread as possible. One can also give the answer of the philosopher and political theorist Karl Marx, who lived from 1818 to 1883 as the inventor of capitalism or at least as the inventor of the word capitalism and the description of the negative sides of capitalism and of its consequences. Marx argues that capitalism estranges workers, but in the end, they will unite and create socialism. A third answer to why capitalism started is given by the German scientist and political theorist Max Weber, who lived from 1864 to 1920. Weber's book, the Protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism argues that the revolution that took place in the interpretation of the Christian faith around the year 1500 was the cause of capitalism. 
According to Max Weber, the German Martin Luther, and even more another Protestant, the French Jean Calvin, promoted capitalism. Without knowing it, Calvinists were not allowed to use and spend money on big houses, expensive food, and so on. So, they were investing their money in their business. Kevin gave the additional explanation that success in your business was a sign that God sees you as a good Christian, thus giving a further incentive to work hard at your business. 4. Who invented how to sail against the wind? What is the problem? We all understand that it is possible to sail in a sailboat when you have the wind behind you. But somehow, the Vikings, the Romans, and other people learned to make sailboats that could actually sail against the wind. Here, you are perhaps not under the curse of knowledge, which I have spoken about. But one can indeed sail against the wind in a sailboat and even fast. The solution is to pull in the sails very tight. Then the sails are not working through the push of the wind, but through the pull of the wind of the backside of the sail. Then you can tack, which means to turn and get the wind in from the other side, and in this way work your way to the direction where the wind is coming from. Here is a modern example. In late 2012, Vestas Sail Rocket 2, a so-called hydrofoil, reached a speed of 65.45 knots, 121.2 kilometers per hour, on water. That is around 2.5 times the speed of the wind. So, you can sail faster in the direction of your target than the speed of the wind. 5. Who invented the computer mouse? What is the problem? The problem is, how can we most practically communicate and make our wishes known to the new computers that were marketed in the years after 1960? Today, we can even talk to them, but let us forget that for now. The first public demonstration of a mouse controlling a computer system was in 1968. Most modern mice use optical sensors that have no moving parts. Though originally all mice were connected to a computer by a cable, many modern mice are cordless, relying on short-range radio communication with the connected system. Thank you for watching these inventions.